Good morning, Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. One more time, we are able to come together here on this Shabbat day, uh, this rest day, to give glory and honor to the Most High Yah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and worship His Son, our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, which is Jesus the Christ. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for being here with us. We are so excited, so, so excited to um, jump into uh, what is going to be an absolutely incredible study. Um, it, it is just so overwhelming at times uh, what the Most High God is doing through this ministry, through the support of this ministry, uh, the word that's going forth. Uh, we're excited uh, just to have you here with us, whether you're here with us live or whether you're watching on demand on YouTube. We want to say thank you for your support. Just the fact that you are here with us and that you're desiring to grow and learn more about your faith and how you, we all can become uh, just greater servants uh, for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So uh, what I would like to do today is uh, say a few things, and then we're going to um, have, a, a, we're going to start a little differently today. Uh, but what I would like to do uh, is first and foremost, I would like to uh, let you know a couple of things. So we want to encourage you all to support us on YouTube, support us on demand. When we post the videos, please go on, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. It is a major support to us uh, to have you viewing the videos, liking the videos, even maybe even making a comment or two. We really appreciate that and subscribe. That always is uh, it's awesome to have uh, you all subscribing and showing your support. So please do that. Uh, it's a major support for us. Also, we want to let you know that uh, in the very near future, uh, we have some uh, resources that we're going to be dropping on uh, our Facebook Facebook page, which is still underway. And by the way, if you're desiring to support our ministry, that is one thing that we do need. We do need support with someone who can help us uh, set up and design and produce our ministry Facebook page. So if you're interested in supporting in that way, uh, please reach out 2444ready at gmail.com and we will uh, definitely connect with you and uh, uh, talk to you about how you can uh, partner with us and support us uh, with launching some of our social media platforms. Also, we will be uh, in the very near future sending out a feedback survey. Uh, we're going to post it not only in our live study, but we're also going to put it on our YouTube channel uh, as well for you to uh, give us some feedback out there uh, on what you're receiving and how it's blessing you uh, in your personal life. We would love to hear testimonies uh, that we might even uh, uh, share uh, sometimes during the study, just what people are experiencing as they're a part of the ministry. So again, we encourage you to do that and participate and help us with that. Uh, but what we're going to do this morning is we're going to actually start uh, with an exhortation. Uh, my dad uh, is going to share some things that are on his heart um, regarding the times in which we're living in, uh, just things that right now um, in the world in which we live that we just need to be reaffirmed in and exhorted in. And so I'm very excited for him to kick us off today as we uh, prepare to uh, continue our study on the appointed times of the Most High. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up in prayer. And then I'm going to turn it over to my dad to kick us off uh, this morning. All right. So let's pray. Father, first of all, we just come humbly before you, thanking you for today, this holy Shabbat day. We bless you, Father, for the opportunity to come before your presence. We bow humbly before you and ask that you would receive all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, Father. While we're in your presence, Father God, let us keep you in the right position, which is the most high position and let us sit low and let us be humble while we're in your presence and let us reside in your presence and dwell in your presence, not just now, but as we walk our daily lives. Father, we ask that this study be a blessing to those that would hear it, whether they're listening live or whether they will watch it later on demand. We pray it will be a blessing to each and every hearer and also that you would bless the doing of of your word as well. Father, just come into our midst. We ask your spirit, your holy Ruach to come here and dwell with us and empower us, Father God, 
to supernaturally empower us to bring forth a word, a word that's in season, a rhema word for someone today. That's our expectation. And it will always, always, always be the standard here in this ministry where you, Father God, are the leadership. You, Father, Yah, are the leadership. And we are just following and being obedient servants. We love you and pray all these things in your son Yeshua's name. Amen. At this time, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my dad to kick us off this morning. Dad? Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I hope everybody's having a wonderful week. And if they're not, uh, we're going to be praying for you throughout the week, as we have always done. Uh, we'd like to um, request that everyone, uh, I know you may not know everybody that's on the chat, but please do be praying for each and every one. Okay, so let's all pray for each other. But today I want to talk about something that I think has been, been a challenge to some, maybe not to all, but at times I think all of us go through these challenges. And that's uh, our weak moments. Sometimes we have these weak moments uh, as we're uh, serving in the kingdom. As you can imagine, anytime you're on a battlefield, there's going to be times when you just don't feel like you've got all you uh, all your spent, all you need, uh, all your wherewithal to get it done. But just know that God is with you and he's going to be strengthening you. He will lead you. That's his, that's his moment to use you uh, like he's ne maybe never used you before. So these are some principles that I've uh, just put down. Uh, not necessarily got listed a lot of scriptures here because many of you, if you've been studying the Bible at all, you've heard a lot of this. But just, just sometimes just a refresher for you, just a reminder, just to encourage you to just know that God is with you. This life <clears throat> as a born again believer is a spiritual warfare. We need to always know that this is a battle. Uh, it is always something that we're dealing with. Um, it's not necessarily physical, it's a spiritual. And sometimes because it's spiritual, we're not thinking of it that way. We, we're, we're looking at the things around us. We're, we're feeling things in our bodies, but just know that it's a spiritual warfare. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. The Lord tells us that. Okay, so just always keep that in mind and just know <laughs> Satan has told us throughout uh, through the scriptures that he's going to and fro. Just know that he's always looking. He's always out and about going to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. Just don't allow him to devour, devour you because he doesn't have the power to overcome you because Christ is in you. Keep that in mind as you walk this walk, walk this walk. Uh, in the kingdom and on the battlefield. Uh, just stay alert, be watchful, be mindful that he's going to try to attack um, through others, through events, through your body. I mean, he's always trying to attack and just be alert and be aware and be strengthened, uh, knowing that God will give you what it, what it takes uh, to overcome. Uh, to become a warrior, we need to always be reminded that uh, any warrior has to be trained. So if you don't go through nothing, how are you going to receive training? So training has to take place. And that's how God does. He, he allows these things to come in our life so he can build us up and sharpen our skills and keep us um, strong uh, in, his, in, his, uh, in his kingdom as we are doing his work. And just know that, that the devil is going to continue trying to attack. But just know that God says he'll never leave you, nor will he forsake you. He's always going to be there. No matter what, no matter how you may feel, no matter what may be going through your mind, just know that God is there with you. Whatever you're going through, he, he expects us to stay in touch with him, but I promise you, he says in his word, he knows your thoughts even before you speak. He knows your concern even before you make them aware. He's already aware, so just know that he's always there. He wants to be our spiritual father, our Abba. He wants to have that intimate relationship with you. So spend time with him. Stay in touch with him. Stay in his word. Uh, stay, uh, stay in touch with other warriors so that you can be, um, you know, so call on somebody else sometime. Don't just try to battle this thing alone. Just know that God has, has got us here together. You know, one of, the, one of the greatest commandments that he's given us is to love one another. How are we going to love each other if we don't stay in touch with each other? Amen? And always be mindful that grace is sufficient 
and he will never put more on you than you can bear. And as we've already learned, uh, his protection is adequate. That's what grace is. He's given us protection. His, his protection is adequate and his yoke is easy. How is his yoke so easy? Because if you, if you, if you, if you go back in, <laughs> into uh, historical times or uh, go back into when they were farming, uh, there was a yoke that was placed on both animals that were in the front. You'd be able to be a mule or an ox. God is in one, using the other. Who you think gonna be pulling all the power? Him, if you let him. Amen. So allow him uh, to carry you through these challenges. Let him be with you because that's what he wants to be. He wants to have that intimate relationship with you. And I promise you, you'll come out as a great warrior and you'll continue to be able to reach back and tell others and, and show others how to accomplish and achieve uh, and overcome these challenges that they're going to come. Because I promise you, some people think that once you become born again, that it's going to be easy peasy from here on out. No, sir. That's when the battle begins, the spiritual battle. And just know that God is going to be with you and he's going to carry you through it. With that, I close. I'm going to share you one, more, one, one scripture. I know I didn't give you a lot of scripture, but like I said, these principles are all throughout the Bible. But one here uh, that I want to share with you, uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, Paul says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is, is made perfect in thy witness. Most gladly, therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities than the power of uh, uh, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Allow his power to rest on you. Let, you, let his will be done and not yours. Amen. With that, I give it back to my son. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dad, for those encouraging words, words of exhortation. Um, again, we hope that uh, that was able to, you know, encourage someone, strengthen someone uh, in maybe your current season, maybe some things you might be uh, experiencing right now, or maybe loved ones might be experiencing right now. One other thing I, want, I meant to say, son, uh, if any of you are going through some stuff and would like to reach out to us, we, we are always saying it, but we don't hear back from too many. We have heard back from a few. And we've had uh, personal studies with a few of you. But know that we, my son and I will make a way. We'll find a way to sit down with you, pray with you, study with you. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have any concerns, send them to us. Send that to us through, you, through, our, uh, through our email, 2444 at gmail.com. Uh, and we will promise you we will get back in touch with you. Amen. Amen. Again, uh, we want to thank everybody uh, for being here this morning and Without any uh, further delay, we're going to jump into our study for today, part three in our series, uh, Markers of the Faith. So uh, let's go ahead and dive right in. So as those of you that have been here with us, you all are uh, familiar. And again, if you have not, if you missed part one or part two, these are already up on our YouTube channel. Uh, please go and check that out. Uh, it will build context into some things that we're going to address here on today. But again, this is part three. What we're doing is we're going through the commanded, and I'm going to emphasize, commanded feasts and convocations of the Most High for his people that are to be observed annually. So just like here in the Western world and maybe the world as a as a, an entire whole, we uh, give a lot of emphasis to certain days in the year. We have certain holidays that we mark and we make sure we don't miss. Uh, sometimes, I mean, like the the new year just passed and the, the, the world makes a huge deal about uh, the, the Greco-Roman new year. And we, we see a lot of celebrations and there's various days uh, that, that we set aside to commemorate certain people. Like, for example, we have uh, this is close to the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, holiday that's observed here in the States. So there's so many days that we set aside and we make special. So basically, we hollow them. So we, I'm going to say it again. We make these days special because that, that's what the word hollow means. Hollow means that I'm going to take this day and I'm going to set it aside for a special purpose. 
That's what the term holy means for those that uh, want to kind of get a practical uh, understanding of what it means to be holy. Holy means that I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to set it aside from everything else and I'm going to make it special. That's what holy is. And so we do that in so many different ways. But the word of Yah states that there are certain seasons in certain times of the year in Israel that are to be observed by his people as a perpetual commandment. And so we're going to get into uh, some of those today as we continue talking about the spring feast. On last week, we dove into the Passover. We talked about the weekly Shabbat because the first commanded day to be observed every week is the Shabbat, the weekly Shabbat. Uh, for those uh, that are not unfamiliar with that, just really quick, it's the seventh day of the week. This day is to be uh, set aside as special. It's a commanded day that is set aside for rest. Uh, no work is to be done on that day. The word of God is very clear about that. And then last week we talked about the Passover. And we talked about its significance in how it points to the sacrifice of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior, as the Messiah, the Passover lamb, according to Paul. And then we also talked about the Feast of Unleavened Bread last week. And all of these uh, feasts and holy convocations are laid out in Leviticus chapter 23. Okay, well, today we're going to go into uh, the next three spring feast and this will conclude the feasts that are to take place or the special seasons and times that are to be observed in the spring. So today we're going to talk about the feast of first fruits, we're going to talk about the feast of weeks and we're, uh, and feast of weeks is also called Shavuot in Hebrew. So if you're doing research you might also see that term out there Shavuot. Uh, and then we also are going to talk about the day of Pentecost. Because for those of you that uh, are uh, are familiar with this uh, this day Pentecost, we we uh, as as uh, renewed covenant believers, followers of Yeshua, we know uh, Pentecost is the day that the Spirit came down uh, and rested on those that were in the upper room. But it's a whole lot more than just that. Pentecost was around and was hollow way before Acts chapter 2. And so we're going to talk about that. So let's go ahead and let's begin. So I want to start out today uh, by, and again, you've seen this uh, every time we've come together. I'm going to encourage you, if you're on your phone, if you are uh, have the ability to take a screenshot, please take a screenshot of this. And I'm going to encourage you to study this calendar because it's extremely important to understand that the Hebrew people, which is the people of the Bible, the Israelites, they did not follow the annual calendar that we follow today. They did not, and they still don't. So I'm gonna say that again. If we're gonna align our lives to the word of the Most High God, and we're gonna take our lives and say, you know what, Father? I'm going to start doing things the way that you commanded it to be done as written in your word, then we have to, first of all, align the times. Because right now, the times in which we move are not the times according to the Bible. And so the Hebrew calendar, which is here on, on the screen for you, it has a, a, a different, um, it has different seasons. So for example, it's it, not in the sense that uh, spring, summer, winter, fall, but the way they're observed is a little different. And so right now, we're still in the winter months. The winter months conclude the Hebrew year, and the spring is the start of the Hebrew year, just like you see here on your screen. Right here, where the, you see the number one at the top of your screen, top middle of your screen. As it rolls uh, from the blue, which is the end of the winter, and comes into the spring, the spring sets the new year. And again, we saw this in Exodus chapter 12. Uh, you can look at verse 1 and 2 to confirm that, that the beginning of the year for the Hebrew people is the month in which the Passover is set. Again, you can find that in Exodus chapter 12, verse number 1 and verse number 2. But what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some of these uh, feasts that you see over here. So we're going to talk about Pentecost. We're going to talk about the Feast of Weeks. And then we're also going to um, get into uh, first fruits. So I hope that is the blessing uh, to you today. We know that it will be. 
So let's continue forward. So let's dive into this. What is first fruits? So simply put, first fruits, which is a, a holy convocation of according to Leviticus 23, is the first day of the week following the Passover. So during the Passover week, okay, when the Passover lamb is, is shed, uh, during that, that week, remember, that's the same week that Yeshua was crucified, okay, because Yeshua is our Passover lamb. That first day of the week, so what we would call Sunday, which is the first day of the week according to the Bible, this is what is called the first fruits. Because our Messiah resurrected on first fruits. And we're going to get into this. So why is this significant to me right now? And why should I care? Why should me living in 2021, why should I care about first fruits? Because first fruits signifies Yeshua as our first fruit. He's the first fruit of the resurrection. And we're going to see that in the word here momentarily. The second thing we're going to talk about is the Feast of Weeks, also called Shavuot. For those wanting to know how to spell Shavuot, it's there on the screen for you. Again, that's the Hebrew pronunciation of the Feast of Weeks. Now, the Feast of Weeks is, is, is a term. It's, it's actually not a day. It's an entire term. It's a 50-day period that starts on first fruits. So the first Sunday after the Passover is called first fruits. And that's day one of the Feast of Weeks, and it runs for seven Sabbaths, okay? Seven Sabbaths means seven days, seven times. So for 49 days, and then the day after, which is the 50th day, is Pentecost. And Pentecost, Penta uh, is the Greek uh, uh, prefix that means 50. It also signifies the law of Jubilee. Now, in these studies, we, but for the sake of time, we don't have uh, the time um, uh, set aside in this study to go into all the details here. If you want a in-depth study, definitely reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to do one for you, but we're doing an overview when we're in our Shabbat studies so that everyone has general knowledge of these things. So again, the Feast of Weeks, also called Shavuot, is a is a period of time that is actually seven Sabbaths from first fruit. And it signifies the 50 days between the time that Yeshua resurrected all the way to the promise of the Ruach. Remember, in Acts chapter, we know that at the end of the Gospels, we know that Yeshua resurrected and was on the earth for 40 days. And then they were waiting 10, they were waiting 10 days in that upper room total of 50, and at that time, the spirit of the Most High fell on the apostles, and that's when we begin to see in Acts chapter 2, they begin to speak with new tongues. Uh, they were empowered to, uh, to basically spread his gospel message and take the Great Commission throughout the entire earth, okay? But that was a 50-day period, so this is extremely significant for us to even recognize today because it's commanded also to be recognized even today. And again, we'll show you that in the biblical text in just a moment. So again, that's what we're going to say to uh, go over today, uh, First Fruits, Feast of Weeks, and Pentecost. So I hope that uh, is a, uh, that helps you with just a general background of what these, uh, these, uh, these convocations, these uh, feast days represent. First Fruits, one more time, represents Yeshua as our first fruit in the resurrection. He was the first of the resurrection according to the word of God. And it's the first day of week, uh, day of the week after Passover. So let me also say this. We should be celebrating first fruits, not Easter. I'm going to say that again. We, as meaning we as in children of the most high, those that have aligned our lives to the word, those that call ourselves Israel, grafted in Israel, we should not be celebrating Easter. We should be celebrating first fruits because first fruits is the true celebration of the resurrection of Yeshua, according to the word of the Most High God. Moving on, Feast of Weeks is a term, a 50 day term from first fruits all the way until Pentecost, which is what we know 
uh, uh, day is the modern uh, birth of, of power that was given to the believers, the disciples, to carry forth the Great Commission and make disciples of all nations. That's the Feast of Weeks. And Pentecost is that day, that celebration of day, which also uh, correlates. And I highly recommend you go and do a personal study on the Law of Jubilee. Okay, for those of you that are familiar with, uh, with, with, the, um, with the Law of Jubilee, it's a very special time uh, that, sh that happens every 50 years. Okay, uh, and it also happens, uh, there's actually two Jubilees. There's one that happens every seven years, and there's one that happens every 50 years, where it's basically like a, a release from bondage and, and a, um, a freedom that is given to the land and also a freedom that's given to the people. But again, I encourage you to go read it on your own. Leviticus chapter 25 lays it out very, very plainly. Moving forward, I want to go ahead and uh, just kind of lay out just what this means, this term first fruit, because it's very significant because kind of first fruit uh, sets all of these days we're talking about in motion. So once first fruit hits, it starts the first day of the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot, which also leads us to Pentecost, which is that 50th day that signifies the end of the wheat harvest okay and again that's that's what the celebration is um is set aside for because you have to remember uh and we're going to get into this in just a second i'll talk about this further the israelites the ancient people of israel they were not the they did not their culture was much much different than ours and I'm going to talk about why this is so significant here in just a moment. And when you understand that they were people that looked to the ground for their sustenance, for their business, um, they, they tilled the land, they worked the land, and the land was their primary means of economy. And we'll talk about that here in just a moment. I'll tell you why that's so significant. But first fruit, the transliteration of that term is on your screen. First fruit in, uh, in Hebrew is uh, is Reshaith. Uh, the Hebrew definition is here on you. It comprises of the letter Resh. It comprises of the letter Aleph, Sheen, Yod, and Tau. These are the letters that signify the term first fruits. And its meaning is the choice part or the best part of something or the first part of something. Okay, and so to put it in the Paleo-Hebrew picture form, if we've taken the these letters, which would be Resh, it would be Olive, it would be Sheen, it would be Yod, and it would be Tau. If we're looking at these, these words in the Paleo-Hebrew picture form, this is what the term first fruits means, and I have it here in yellow for you. It means the head or the authority or the leader is to be broken or cut and be held as a sign or a marker. I'm going to say it again. So the head or the authority or the leader, so the best part, the authority is to be broken or set aside or cut and be held as the sign. So the first fruit is when we set aside the best part, we cut it out, we cut out and set aside the best part of something and we behold it as a sign or a marker of our obedience, of our faithfulness. That's what first fruit signifies in the Hebrew when you look at it in the paleo. And so if we begin to put this together, we'll see just how critical this is. This is why it's so important to give of our best to the most high. He does not want our, uh, the, the second parts. Think about, um, think, think about on a, uh, on a, on a piece of, of meat. Like a, a lot of times, like you're going to want the best part of that meat. The best, think about uh, uh, even when you think of beef, like the, the best part of beef is the most expensive. It's the most quality. And so that's the part that he wants. He wants our best. He wants the most quality things in our life to be given to him. This is critical, absolutely critical. So moving forward, just to, again, bring this point back up, we cannot, even as we're listening and going through today's study, we cannot receive 
all the word of God has for us when we look at the Bible through our cultural lens. I'm going to say it again. We cannot receive all that the Father has for, for us in, in this life, understanding what the word has given us access to what his spirit has empowered us to do. We cannot truly understand it when we try to put the father in our cultural world, in our cultural levels of understanding. The ancient people of Israel, they were an agrarian people. They were a people who worked the land. They were farmers. They were people who found value in raw materials. In, 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 in the, the raw things that were produced from the ground. This is so important. So when you read the word, we have to keep it in its proper context. A lot of times we try to squeeze biblical principles into our culture. And when it doesn't fit or if it doesn't work in our culture, we tend to dismiss it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let that one sit for a second, Dad. Yeah, I'm going to take, take a sip of coffee on that one. <laughs> so I'm going to say it one more time. We unfortunately tend to dismiss things, principles in the Bible, things that are clearly written in black and white in our Bibles. We, we tend to dismiss it when it doesn't fit inside of our culture and we don't understand it or it doesn't work, like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. It doesn't work, so we tend to dismiss it as if it's not relevant, or, or it's not, uh, it doesn't uh, work for these times. I, I, I had the same understanding many years ago. Like, I would read the Bible, and if I didn't understand it, or I was like, oh, that doesn't work today, I just dismissed it. Amen. I know I'm not the only one, right? Dad, it, it, were, you, you, were you like that as well? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it, so, so we, but we cannot do that. We have to align our life to the word. We have to align our life to the word, and we have to always keep the word in its proper context. That's so important, even as we're thinking about these commanded, appointed times with the Father, these special seasons and days and times that are set aside for us to commune with him, whether it fits into our schedule or not, we're still commanded to obey. We're still um, commanded to align our lives to the word of the Most High God. Now, let's get into some of the, uh, the, the texts that back up some of the things that we've discussed here this morning. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 23. We're going to start reading at verse number 10. Leviticus chapter 23, verse number 10. Commanded, this is commands given to Moses for the people about his appointed times, his feasts, his appointments, his convocations with his people. He says this to Moses, speak unto the children of Israel and say to them, when, so that means it's a specific time. When ye come into the land which I give to you. So you can't do this until you come into the land. So when you enter the promised land, talking to the ancient Israelites, saying, when you come into the, uh, the, the land that I will give you and shall reap of the harvest thereof. Again, this is the father putting a principle in place so that the people can understand all of their sustenance comes from him. And this is a way that we show that. It says, then shall ye bring a sheaf of the first fruit of the harvest unto the priest. So they were told when to do it. They were told how to do it. And they were also told where to take it. So they were to do it when they came into the land. They were to bring a sheaf of the first fruit of the wheat harvest. And they were to take it to the Levitical priest. It says, and he, the priest, shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. And it clearly says here in green, on the morrow after the Sabbath. On the morrow after the Sabbath. So what day are we talking about right here? What day is the morrow after the Sabbath that we learned earlier? If you're here with us live, put it in the chat. If you're here with us live, put it in the chat. What is on the morrow after the Sabbath? 
right here in green? What what is this day? What are we talking about right here? What is what is this referring to in green where it says on on the morrow after the Sabbath? What what day are we talking about? Do we have any uh, responses? So far, we got thought? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Okay, yeah. so the first day of the week. But what is this day called that we just talked about? What is this day called? Where the people are bringing an offering to the priest. What, what is this day called? We just, we just said it. I give you a hint. It's right here in our text. The answer, brothers and sisters, is first fruits. Somebody just put it in there, son. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. So that the day or the morrow after the Sabbath is first fruits when we're talking about that Passover week. Because if you go, if you go a few verses up, you'll see there uh, the Passover in unleavened bread or being discussed and laid out. Okay, it says, the priest shall wave that sheaf offering, and ye shall eat neither bread, nor parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that you have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It says, it shall be a statue forever. It says, forever. Dad, do we need to break down forever? Do we need to get a Hebrew definition for forever? I think I think that one's. Um, I think we can handle that one. I think we're good. Okay, and and <laughs> and when it says throughout your generation, so that means that I, we should be teaching it to our children, and our yeah, children should be sure teaching it to does. their children. It sure enough, does. and their children so should gotta, be teaching it to their keep children. This thing going. That's right. <clears throat> I just want to make sure I'm on the same page. Mm -hmm. That that that, that we we're, we're we're making this very plain. This says that this is not to stop, my brothers and sisters, not to stop. It says a statue forever throughout your generation in all your dwellings. What does that mean, Dad? Oh, Dad, where it says in all your dwellings or brothers and sisters that are here with me live. What does that mean when it says in all your dwellings? Somebody help me this morning. Somebody here live help me this morning. What does it mean when it says in all your dwellings? What does that mean practically? What does that mean in plain terms? So this statue of the it's first not a fruit. It's, it's not a trick question, y'all. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, I, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. What does it mean when it says in all your dwellings? We got household. In, in verse 14. Okay, here comes some answers. I got household and okay. every, everything at home, at work, everywhere you go, where you come in. No, I'm sorry. When you come in and when you go out. Love it. All correct, no matter where you are, in all your dwellings, no matter where you're living, no matter where you're residing, no matter it doesn't matter where you are, your location does hey, not hey, determine even if you go on vacation. Exactly. Nothing is to stop this from from, from being uh, you know, observed. I bring that up. This is to happen no matter where you are. I bring that up because you know how we are when we go on vacation now. Oh, <laughs> oh well you know the father understands he understands he knows my heart yeah he do know your heart he hey, knows my heart the, too the famous, the famous one out there what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas come on now, <laughs> come on now. let's keep moving brothers and sisters let's keep moving mm. the, next, the next one let's deal with uh, Shavuot let's deal with the feast of weeks this is verse 15 through 17 in Leviticus 23 it says and ye shall count so that means that during the feast of weeks we should be counting days we should be counting the days leading up to Pentecost which is the 50th day of the Feast of Weeks. It says, and ye shall count, I just want to underscore that, we are to count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. So when do we start counting? We just said it, the morrow after the Sabbath. What day is that again, my brothers and sisters? 
first fruits. The morrow after the Sabbath we just established is first fruits. You are to begin counting. So this is so awesome, brothers and sisters. So every day you can wake up with an expectation like, man, this is day two. We, we, we got 48 more days. Man, this is day 11. We got how many more? I got 39 more days. So you can, the awesome thing about first fruits is that it's a building up and an anticipation to man on that 50th day. Why do you think, why do you think the power fell so strong on the upper room in Acts chapter two, when the 120 disciples were waiting on the promise? Because they have been waiting since the resurrection of Yeshua, they have been building up an anticipation. He told us a promise was coming. He told us something was going to happen. And so they were waiting and waiting and waiting. Can you imagine? You you sit every day, you wake up, and the anticipation is building. It's like going on, talking about vacation. It's like for kids going, to, going on vacation. They know that day is coming. And every day, man, how many more days? How many more days? How many more days? That's how we should be when it comes to uh, th these seasons. We should have an anticipation. Father, I know you're going to do something mighty in my life as I, as I walk by faith and as I expect you to move in the earth realm. And you're going to do something amazing. You're going to allow your spirit to fall in a special way, in a unique way on this special day because I'm going to be ready for you. I'm going to be waiting for you, Father. I'm going to count like I've been commanded to count every single day. And I'm going to go for, and it says here, from the day that you bring the sheep and wave offering to the priest, that's first fruits, you are to count seven Sabbaths. How many days is seven Sabbaths? We just said it. Okay, so if a Sabbath is seven, right? Seven days, Sabbath, in seven Sabbaths, how many days is that? How many days is that? Somebody put that in the chat. How many days is that? Again, it's not a trick question. No, no, it's not a trick question. Don't don't let my don't let my fire uh thing, let me have you thinking that I'm I'm setting you up. No, I'm not setting you up, brother and sister. I don't want we don't need any confusion in here. We got an answer 49 and another answer 49. Absolutely correct, brothers and sisters. 49 is correct. Seven Sabbaths is 49 days. It says it says seven Sabbaths shall be complete, even unto the morrow after the seventh sabbath you shall number 50 days so the very next day after you count those seven sabbaths that day is the day of pentecost that's the 50th day and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the lord ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves uh of, of two tenths deals that uh, that shall be a fine flour they shall be baked with leaven they are the first fruits unto the lord and again these different offerings were given. Again, we're talking about an, uh, an agrarian people. But how can we observe this today? We can give of the best of our sustenance. We can give of the best of our subs sustenance. We can prepare beautiful meals for our loved ones and even those that we don't know uh, in, in anticipation. Pentecost should be a day of celebration. It should be a feast day. It should be a day where, where people want, man, shoot, it's smelling good over y'all house. What y'all doing today? Man, we celebrating. We celebrating. Come get some of this. Why, why, why y'all eating today? Bam, you got an opportunity to witness. Hello. Hello. How, many, how, I mean, how, easy, how, how easy is it for food to bring people together and draw people in? Man, you outside cooking that meat. They are uh, grilling on the grill. They want, hey, what's going on over there, man? Y'all come on over and get some of this. Let me tell y'all about what's going on here today. What we doing in Israel? What y'all doing in what? Israel. What you talking about Israel? And then you begin to pour seed into their life. You begin to pour water into their life. Hallelujah. Let me, let, is, me just, let me just throw this in that count. Uh, you, know, you know, we did this this past year. And we make we just we had fun with it. We we uh, challenged each other to see you know who was keeping up with the days. So that when we got to that fiftieth day, you know it was a it was just a fun time. But you know y'all don't have to don't don't make this so stressful. You know enjoy this time with the Lord. Amen. And so I just wanted to share that because we did that on a couple of our uh, yeah. celebrations, and we you know we challenged each other. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And here, here is the actual day laid out here in verse 21. 
verse 21 of Leviticus chapter 23. This is the day of Pentecost. It says, and on that, and ye shall proclaim on the self same day, that 50th day, that it may be a holy convocation unto you. It's to be a Sabbath. It says here, ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue, again, a statue forever in all your dwellings throughout your generations. Brothers I need, and sisters, to, this I, is I need to share ahead, this. I need to share this with you, son. It's kind mm -hmm. of funny. It's kind of comical, but it said, we, we in Houston don't know our neighbors. You sure? <laughs> sure, right about that. We we got to do better. You know what? It's so funny you you, you say that. Um, mm -hmm. My brother and sister, whoever gave, gave that comment, that's so true. Mm -hmm. But think about the opportunities yep. that these these convocations, these special times and appointments with the Father, think about how these give us opportunities to, to connect with people on an, on an internal level, not just on a, sur a superficial level. Because you're right, many of us have a very superficial relationship with our neighbor. We say mm -hmm. hi and bye. See them in the morning. We might wave, but we don't really have a relationship with these people. First of all, we don't know most of our neighbors. We don't, you know, we don't really let people in our lives like that. And in the times in which we live, that might be wisdom. But during these times, the father could be using these days as a way for you to draw people in. To lift, lift up his, his name. Lift up, lift up his name. Lift, <clears throat> uh, lift, uh, show honor and reverence. And and like I said, people will will, will come when we are using the name of Yeshua. And his father, our heavenly father, to bring people into the kingdom. Because this is what we're supposed to be doing. But you're so Amen. right about that. Amen. You're so right about that, about us not knowing our neighbors. That's good. So, listen, as we prepare to bring this to a close, I, I, I want this morning to uh, leave you with this last text. And it's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to encourage you. For those that are watching here live, uh, with us live, or those that might be watching on demand, study the entire chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Study the entire chapter. I've taken an excerpt out of this chapter, but I encourage you to study the entire chapter because it truly shows you why Yeshua as the first fruit of the resurrection is so critical and why we need to celebrate this. Not every day, but particularly when we've been commanded during the times of the year, we've been commanded to celebrate it. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 16 through 22. It says this, for if the dead rise not, because there were some people, there were some, uh, there were some uh, sectors of the uh, Hebrew society, like the Sadducees, that did not believe in the resurrection. Okay. And Paul is saying here to the Corinthians, for if the dead rise not, then Christ is not raised. And if Christ is not raised from the dead, your faith is in vain. My faith is in vain. And if our faith is in vain, then we are yet in our sins. Have mercy. This is serious business. The resurrection of Yeshua is serious business. It is the difference in eternal life and us still being in our sins. It says, then they which have fallen asleep in Christ also perish. Now, let me say this. Now, I'm really about to rock the boat right now, Dad. You ready for this? Come on. I ain't even tell you about this one. You ready, you ready for this? Brothers and sisters that are here live, y'all ready for this? Those that are watching on, on YouTube, on demand, y'all ready for this? I'm about to rock the boat. This says clearly here that there is a state of being called falling asleep in Christ. Hmm. 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 You know how we love to think that when our loved ones pass away, absent with the body, present with the Lord. Have we been taught, taught that? Absent with the body, present with the Lord. Have, have we been taught that? But that's not what the Bible, the Bible, when you stay it in context, says that when you, when you take your last breath in Yeshua, you go to sleep. You go to sleep to be raised when that last trump sounds, when he comes back for his people to be raised. Because the Bible says that those that are asleep shall be rise first. And then we which are alive will be caught up with them in the air. So our loved ones that are in Yeshua, in Jesus Christ, 
are not in heaven. <gasps> I'm going to say it again. Our loved ones that have died in this physical world that had relationships with the Most High through his son Yeshua are not in heaven right now. They are sleeping. They are sleeping, waiting for that trumpet to sound for Yeshua to crack the sky so that they can be resurrected to new life, receive the new body, and we which are alive will follow them. Mm -hmm. But that's for another study. But I just figured I'd rock the boat real quick. Dad, I hope that wasn't too big of a rock. I hope we still got everybody with us, hopefully. When you, when you say another study, I promise you guys, we will get to that one. That <laughs> <laughs> Because that one is definitely needed in the kingdom. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. It says here, uh, again, then they also which are falling asleep in Yeshua, in Christ, are perish. Because see, there's a difference between falling asleep and perishing. Perishing okay. means you no longer exist. You no longer exist. You, you, your eternal life is done. You, you, are, you are finished. It's over for you. It says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ... We all, we of all men are most miserable. So he's basically, Paul is saying here, if we, if, if there's no resurrection and Yeshua did not uh, resurrect from the dead and our faith is in vain and, and we're still in our sins, then this life that we're living in Yeshua, this is a miserable life. This is a miserable mm -hmm. life because we, we doing all this stuff, making all these sacrifices. We aligning our lives and being obedient and for what? To die and to have our, our eternal soul uh, uh, perish? Oh, man, this is miserable. He says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. Yeshua was the first of the resurrection. That's another study for those that want to go deeper, the, that, that might think uh, that, that there was others that might have preceded Yeshua in, in the, etern the, the resurrection to eternal life. That's another study, but not to digress too much. It says, for since by man came death, Adam, by man also the resurrection of the dead, Yeshua. For as in Adam all die, even in Christ shall all be made alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we conclude, brothers and sisters, and bring our study to a close, we want to uh, just pr uh, point out a few things here. First and foremost, I want to thank my, my dad for uh, sharing those ex exhortations at the beginning of our study today, you brothers and sisters, you are a warrior in this fight of faith. Amen. No matter what you might be going through, know that you have been called as a conqueror. You are a warrior. No matter what the times or your environment may bring, you have been called to be a warrior on the father's battlefield. And yes, we have to go through things to build up our strength as warriors. It's a part of this life. The word says, if you desire to live in Yeshua HaMashiach, you will suffer for persecution. Amen. That's in your Bible. So Amen. if you think that your life is going to be peaches and roses and rainbows 24-7, you are sadly uh, deceived. The Bible says that we will experience persecution, but they are to build our faith. They are to build us up so that we can be the warriors we're called to be. Yeshua is the first fruit of the resurrection of the dead. He is the first of the resurrection. Uh, Pentecost was also special before the Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKodesh was given to men in Acts 2. So don't think that the first time Pentecost was had come around was when we see it in Acts 2, when it's mentioned in Acts 2. No, this was already a commandment in Israel that was given to the children of Israel. This was Torah. This was law that was already given to the people. And something, and, and that's all, that's why, uh, that's why these days are so important too, because history records that major events happen on these days, Amen. historically. Amen. Amen. The, people, these of Israel, the people of Israel look forward to it every year. Amen. They look forward to it every Amen. year. Amen. It says these convocations are special opportunities for Israel to obey his word and build up an intimate relationship with him as our Abba, our heavenly daddy. Mm -hmm. So brothers and sisters, 
We pray that you've been blessed. Those that are here with us live, we're going to ask that you hang back for a few moments while we address maybe a few questions that you have. If you're watching on demand, thank you so much for being with us today. We pray a blessing on each and every one of you all. Amen. Amen. That's going to end our study. So for